Om Namah Shivaya students. Today we are going to start a new chapter, Air and Water. This is chapter number 11 of your science book. In this chapter, we will discuss in detail about air, its composition, its properties and then we will move on to water. We know that air and water both are very important to us. So, we will discuss about these two important things in our life in this chapter. Okay. So, at first, uh, to discuss about air, we should know what is the composition of air in our atmosphere. So, we must know what is atmosphere. Our mother earth is being surrounded by a layer of gases, layer of air, which is called atmosphere. And due to the presence of this atmosphere, our earth is so special to us because living things can survive on earth only because of the presence of this atmosphere. Atmosphere contains different gases. All means uh, the gases have different names. Here we are going to learn about some important gases. You have already heard about the gases like nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide. These gases are present in our atmosphere. Out of that, oxygen is the most important gas that helps us to breathe, that helps us to survive. So the living world is existing on this earth only because of the presence of atmosphere because oxygen is present in the atmosphere. Okay. Now, other than this nitrogen, oxygen and carbon dioxide, many more gases are also there like argon, neon, means you don't have to learn these names, but these are some of the gases which are present in the atmosphere. Okay, so uh, the layer of air surrounding the earth is called atmosphere. You may get, an, uh, get a question, what is atmosphere? Now, what are the gases in atmosphere? It has nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, argon and many more. Okay. So, now uh, this nitrogen gas, this is just for your knowledge, nitrogen gas is, uh, is present in maximum amount in our atmosphere. It is about 78% of nitrogen gas which is present in our atmosphere. 21% is oxygen and the rest means 78 plus 21 means 99. So, only the rest of 1% is being covered by all the other different gases, even carbon dioxide plus water vapor, then different dust particles are there. Everything are covered within that 1%. Okay. Now, the concentration of oxygen reduces or decreases as we go high up okay as we are suppose climbing a mountain or we are going on the top of a hill station then oxygen uh, percentage over there or the concentration of oxygen becomes less okay uh, so that is why you have often seen that the mountaineers when they are going up or when they are trekking, when they are climbing up the mountains they are carrying the oxygen cylinders at, uh, on their back why? Because as they have, uh, as the concentration of oxygen is less, so the mountainers uh, use oxygen mask and they carry oxygen cylinder when they are climbing high up in the altitude, means high up altitude when they are climbing up. I hope I am clear about air and its composition. Now let us move on to atmosphere. The atmosphere is divided into five layers. Very nicely it is written uh, in your textbook and you have to know about each and every layer of the atmosphere. The atmosphere's five layers are troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and exosphere. Please learn the spellings also. Don't make mistake in the spelling. Now troposphere is the layer of atmosphere which is closest to the earth. Okay, here we can see the cloud means the weather of the earth uh, is uh, actually seen means most of the earth's weather including the wind, clouds, everything exists in the troposphere. Okay, now the next layer is stratosphere. It is very important because it includes the ozone layer. Now the question is what is this ozone layer? First of all, ozone is a gas. It is present that um, that ozone gas layer is present in uh, in a 
in the layer of stratosphere. Now, why it is so important to us? The ozone layer which is present in the stratosphere prevents the entry of ultraviolet rays to come inside. Now, let me explain that sunlight is very important to us. We have already learned that sun is the ultimate source of heat and light. It is the most important source of energy to us. Without sunlight, living world cannot survive. Okay, but still then, every good thing has some uh, negative things. Uh, maybe it may have some negative thing. That kind of negative thing sunlight is also having and that is the ultraviolet rays or the UV rays. This UV rays or ultraviolet rays of sun are very harmful for the living world. It can cause different type of diseases to us, to the entire living world it can cause different type of diseases. That is why we have a protective shield in our earth. That is inside the stratosphere, the ozone layer is that protection layer for us which doesn't allow the um, ultraviolet rays of the sun, that is the harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun to come inside. Okay. So, uh, what is mesosphere? The third layer. And uh, it has a less amount of water vapor than the previous layers of stratosphere and troposphere. Okay. Now, the fourth layer is thermosphere. From the name only, we can understand that uh, it is something related to temperature or heat. That is why the name is thermo, thermosphere. So, despite increase in height, uh, we all know that when we are uh, rising up, means when we are climbing up to higher altitude, then the temperature reduces. When we go on the top of the hill stations, it is much cold. The temperature is much low over there. But in case of the thermosphere, though we are rising up high altitude or we are, uh, we are having increase in height, but the temperature also increases rapidly in thermosphere. Okay, the temperature in thermosphere is very high. Now the last layer is the exosphere. Now it is the fifth and the topmost layer of atmosphere. Now as it is uh, quite far away from the earth's surface, so, of course, the gravity will be very, um, means uh, weak, weak over here. And that is why some tiny particles which are uh, roaming around in the atmosphere, often they, uh, they are drifted into space, means often they, uh, they cannot be attracted anymore by the Earth's atmosphere. And so, they are going into the space. So, always remember, exosphere has less amount of less uh, strong gravity clear now we will move on to the importance of atmosphere now uh, atmosphere maintains uh, see these are totally i have taken from your textbook and it often comes even these three points can also come right three importance of atmosphere see the first uh, importance is Atmosphere maintains a habitable temperature for life on earth. Habitable means so that we can uh, survive. Okay, so that we can, uh, we can consider earth as our habitat, that is as our living place. Now the second one is just now we have discussed about ozone layer, that it protects us from sun's harmful UV rays. That is the second point. And the third one is uh, very interesting. Now, <clears throat> atmosphere protects our planet from the meteoroids. Now, what are these meteoroids? These meteoroids are small rocks which are moving around, okay, in the space. And uh, sometimes these meteoroids enter, uh, means come, come closer to the earth and they can uh, fall on the earth. So, when they will fall on the earth, what will they do? They, they will cause harm to our earth. So, this, uh, these meteoroids... Uh, they are uh, means uh, they are prevented to fall on the earth due to the presence of this atmosphere. What does the atmosphere do? The atmosphere has air in it. It has different type of gases that is it is air. So whenever the meteoroids come inside our atmosphere, you have already learned about frictional force. Now, in between the, those small rocks or meteoroids and the gases of the atmosphere, there is a friction. And due to this friction between the air or the atmosphere and the small rocks or the meteoroids, the meteoroids burn out. 
before reaching the ground of the earth. That is why they cannot cause much harm to our earth. Okay. I hope I am clear to you about the importance of atmosphere. They are very important. Now we will discuss about properties of air. These are very important. You may get right to properties of air or you may get questions like this. Prove that air occupies space by an experiment. In this way also you will get question. So there are total five properties of air. Air occupies space. Air expands on heating. Air contracts on cooling. Air has weight and air pressure. Let us take one by one. Air occupies space. Yes, a very good example is balloon. When we are blowing air into the balloon, it is becoming bigger in size. So it proves that air occupies space. Now the second one, air expands on heating. This needs an experimental setup. They are telling you, um, see the picture is also given. They have taken one uh, utensil, maybe a beaker or anything like that. And uh, they have put one empty bottle um, over that uh, beaker. And the beaker is uh, uh, filled with water. Then uh, means the bottle doesn't have cap. The lid of the bottle is open and instead of that a balloon is fixed in the mouth of the bottle. And then the water in the beaker is heated. Okay, so when the water in the beaker is heated, we will see what you know. Slowly, slowly the balloon is, uh, is becoming bigger in size. So um, how the, why the balloon is becoming bigger in size? Actually the air inside the bottle. We have, uh, <clears throat> we know that each and every place in our earth, it cannot be empty. It has air. So air was there in the empty bottle and so that air is expanding due to the heating of the uh, vessel the, due, due to the heating of that uh, beaker of water and so as the as the air is being uh, heated so the air is expanding and thereby the expanded air where it will stay it is because the glass uh, or the beaker the glass uh, sorry the glass uh, bottle is was totally filled with air now as the air is expanding, so the air has to stay uh, somewhere. So it is getting space inside the balloon and it is entering into that. Clear? Air contracts and cooling, you can um, take one uh, balloon, uh, means tied up properly. And if you will keep it inside your freezer of the refrigerator, after some time you will see that the balloon has contracted. That is the air inside the balloon has contracted and that is why the balloon has contracted now air has weight <coughs> this if you have any uh, any uh, means weighing balance or something like that if you will weigh one filled up balloon and one empty balloon means balloon without air then you will see that the uh, balloon which is filled up with air is much more heavier and the last one air pressure Air pressure is the pressure exerted by the weight of air. Learn this definition. Okay. What is air pressure? Now blow up a balloon. Means you are filling air into a balloon. Hold the mouth of the balloon in both the hands. Tightly you have to hold the mouth of the balloon. You will not tie the mouth. You will just hold the mouth. Now you will stretch the mouth. Means the balloon is made up of uh, elastic material. So you can stretch the mouth of the balloon. And uh, you will hold it in such a way so that uh, means after holding it for some time, you will create a small space to your hand so that a little bit of air can come outside from the balloon. Earlier you were holding the mouth of the balloon tightly. Then you are holding the mouth of the balloon in such a way so that a little bit of space is there for the air to come out. So as soon as you are giving the space uh, to the air, the air now wants to come out very fast. Air is exact, uh, exerting pressure from inside part of the balloon. It is exerting pressure and it wants to come out. Now, but it is not getting proper space to come out and the, all the air molecules are pushing each other to come out. That is why what is happening, a peculiar sound, very high pitched, high sound, like a whistle. You can hear the sound of a whistle because the entire air inside the balloon is pushing and they are wanting to come out. That is why as the air flows out of the balloon, you will hear a high-pitched sound. 
squeaking noise irritating means noise you will hear now why does the balloon squeak the answer is due to the air pressure the air due to the air pressure the air uh, all the air wants uh, are exerting the pressure on the mouth of the balloon and they want to come out and uh, but they are getting a very small space that is why that sound comes out i hope i am clear to you about all the properties of air prepare the lesson up to here very soon i will send you the next video class in which we will discuss about the different uh, things about water okay uh, so wait for my next video class om namah shivaya